Good morning. Sure is good to see you this morning. And uh, we want to also welcome all of you who are worshiping with us online today. Um, it is our desire. Um, every time we gather here in person or online to lift up the name of Jesus. I hope you were watching that video. We do um, want to thank all of those here who have served in the armed forces. I want to do something a little different. If you have a son or daughter who served in the armed forces, would you just raise your hand right now? All right. Uh, that includes me, my oldest daughter, Kristen, served in the Coast Guard. And um, so we thank all you parents whose sons and daughters have served in the military. And then I'm going to ask if you have served in one of the branches of our military, would you stand at this time? Thank you. Thank you. Um, we do appreciate your service, and it's my prayer that we would not take for granted um, those who have served uh, our country uh, in one of the branches of the armed forces. I really, I found that, that video interesting because it talks about us praying, uh, Father, um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm thankful that the day is coming um, when God's kingdom has come, that there will be no armed forces, right? Um, there will be no war, and um, we will be at peace for all eternity. That's a beautiful thing, is it not? Uh, Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Just a couple other announcements. Continue to pray for our Multiply student ministry on Wednesday night. Uh, if you know of a student, maybe you have a student or know of a student, um, please let them know about this incredible opportunity. Um, pray for Cody and our adult volunteers. Um, we have a lot of college student, young adults who volunteered to help lead uh, our multiply ministry, and let's pray for all of them and our students as the ministry continues to pick up speed, build momentum, and we look forward to what God is doing in the lives of our students. Also, there's a ministry, um, Grief Share is the name of the overall ministry. But there is a special grief share opportunity beginning November 5th. And the name of that opportunity is Surviving the Holidays. You know, the holidays can be difficult um, for, in particular, for those who have lost a spouse, a son or daughter, even a dear friend. Um, speaking of that, um, this past week, Chad Carger um, lost his father, Mel Carger. Uh, many of you do not know this, but Mel served in vocational ministry for many, many years, was a pastor. And um, so please pray for the Carger family. Pray specifically for Bobby, um, Mel's wife, um, during this time of loss. Guys, it is great to be in God's house today. Uh, I am excited about the Give Thanks series that we entered into last week. And um, it's my prayer that as we worship today, throughout our worship, um, we would just speak those words, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Um, let's... Let's worship our King right now. Shannon, we thank you so much for leading our worship team and leading us in worship today. Well, good morning. It's, it's so good to see you all here. It's good to see you. Um, I can't see you at home, but I know you're there. Um, would you stand as we prepare our hearts? I don't know about you, but this week I have had my praise and worship on 24-7 almost. Um, I've needed to rise above 
what's been going on. I needed to be reminded and reassured of what I'm so thankful for, and that is God is sovereign and he is on the throne and he places kings and kingdoms at the the proper time uh, to lead people and nations and countries. And and so um, we can rest in his sovereignty. We can rest and be thankful that he is our king. He is our king. He is our benevolent leader. Um, so as we bring all of this week's, um, the whole gamut to this, this moment, I just pray that you, you, um, you put your savior on, on the throne of your heart this morning. This dry and desert land I tell myself keep walking on Here's something up ahead Water falling like a song An everlasting stream Your river carries me home Let it flow, let it flow
to remember the truth that God is sovereign and he, he is, his love endures forever.
I just love how worship music and scripture, we, we read these to ourselves, we sing these to our, to our hearts, and they just remind us. Um, they, they lift our heads and they pull us out of any situation that we can be in. We can rise above it and uh, we can rejoice in all circumstances. This is a new song, newish, um, but it just it just ministers to my heart. It reminds me, nothing can take away my praise. Nothing can take away my worship. Peace, be still. Calm this soul. I need you here now. Restore.
Lord Jesus, God, we thank you that nothing can separate us from your love. Nothing can come in the way of us worshiping you. We praise you, and we, you, you are so glorified and pleased when we praise you in the midst of struggle, when we praise you in spite of what's going on. We praise you in persecution. We praise you in disappointment. God, you are... It just fills, it fills your heart. And you are pleased with your children. And we are filled and we are comforted. Father, I pray that this praise was pleasing and a sweet fragrance to you this morning. We ask all of the rest of this service by the power of Jesus. Would you minister to us through the word in Jesus' name? Amen. like you to join me uh, again in this reading. We will share this reading with each other and lift up um, the name of our great God every Sunday morning. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Give thanks to the God of God's. Give thanks to him who alone does great wonders. Give thanks to him who by understanding made the heavens. Give thanks to him who spread out the earth above the waters. Give thanks to him who made the great lights. Give thanks to him who made the sun to rule over the day. Give thanks who made the moon and the stars to rule over the night. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. Father, we just thank you for your great love. Father, we thank you that you are indeed good. Your love is steadfast. Your love is an everlasting love. Your love is an unconditional love, and nothing shall separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, we thank you for your great love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we launch into our message today, we're focusing in on the theme, be confident, give thanks. Be confident, give thanks. Guys, I just want to say something as I begin. And I I just want to make something very clear. Um, You will never see me post any political post on Facebook, on Twitter, Um, You will never hear me make political statements in uh, worship in my messages. For some of you, you think I should. For some of you, you think I, I shouldn't. I'm just saying I never will do that. Why? Because our body, this flock, is made up of people with a wide variety of opinions. I have opinions I always vote. I consider it an incredible privilege. I just want to warn you 
Do not try to figure out uh, my political opinions. Seriously, do you hear that? Don't try to figure it out. You won't be able to um, because I'm an equal opportunity offender. I do. I offend my wife. I offend my daughters. I offend my in-laws. I probably offend Paul sometimes, right, Paul? So, I mean, I mean really, because my role as pastor is to teach truth And so today I'm going to teach truth, and it is on this theme, be confident, give thanks. I never do what I'm about to tell you I did this week. I finished my message completely on Tuesday before the election results came out. Nothing has changed in my message. Absolutely nothing. Why? Because God has not changed since Tuesday. I, for one, am very thankful for that. Are you thankful for that? God has not changed one bit since Tuesday. And God knew what would happen in this election long before any election results were shared. So be confident, give thanks. I can be confident regardless of what world I live in and can give thanks. As you know, we are in a series, and this series um, was really influenced. In some ways, there are seeds of birth in it tied to a book I read several years ago uh, entitled 1,000 Gifts, A Dare to Live Fully Right Where You Are. Now, 1,000 Gifts, I have that part of the title, right? It's a dare to live fully right where you are. That defines why 1,000 Gifts are important. We can live fully right now. We can live fully regardless of an election, right? And again, I said, don't try to figure me out, right? See, I just want to be clear. Regardless of who I'm speaking to today, be confident. Give thanks. I'd like to read the definition of confidence several aspects. Confidence, noun, the act of confiding, trusting, or putting faith in, trust, reliance, belief. Number one. Number two, that in which faith is put or reliance had. Number three, trustful without fear or suspicion, frank, unreserved. Through definition number three, I believe there is an object of our confidence, right? Number four, though, shows a confidence that we will say he's a very confident individual. That might mean, I hope if something, someone's talking about me, it's because my confidence is in Christ, not my confidence is in myself. But there is a confidence which can simply be about ourself. Number four, number four, the state of mind characterized by one's reliance on himself or his circumstances, a feeling of self-sufficiency such as leads to a feeling of security, self-reliance. Four different aspects, or four, you might say, definitions. The first three, very similar. The last one, uh, a little different. If you would, take out a Bible. Um, In your pew, you will find the same translation that I read from for the majority of my messages. And I just want to invite you. um, You might not have this translation. You worship with us at home or you're, you're coming regularly here, take that Bible. It's yours, okay? Take that Bible. We will fill the pew again, but take that Bible in the pew and um, write your name in the front. It's yours because we, we would love for you to take that as a gift from us, if you would. Luke chapter 17 is the first passage we will look at today. Luke 
chapter 17. I want us to look at the passage beginning in verse 11 where Jesus cleanses the ten lepers. And I want you to think on this theme, giving thanks flows from confidence in God. Giving thanks flows from confidence in God. Now, in in various um, um, key points today, you can substitute Jesus for God, right? Jesus is God, 100% man, 100% God. Um, He laid down um, his life for us. But even more than that, he left heaven's throne and took on the form of a servant. The king of kings came to this earth and served us. On the way to Jerusalem, he, Jesus, was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. Now, no joke, folks, social distancing for a leper was a way of life. We think there's an emphasis on social distancing today. You could be killed if you were a leper and did not practice social distancing. You were unclean. You could not worship in the temple as a leper. And if someone had access with you, they would have to go through a cleansing ritual to worship again in the temple. They kept their distance And they would often cry out, unclean, unclean. Tough way of life, is it not? Very difficult way of life. Jesus, master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. And they went, and as they went, they were cleansed. Why are they showing themselves to the priest? For the exact reason I just mentioned, the priest would say, cleansed. You're no longer unclean. You no longer have to live the way of life associated with an unclean person the priest would make a declaration. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving giving him thanks. Now, he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Giving thanks flows from confidence in God. Let's name some very, very serious diseases. I want you to help me. Name some diseases today. Let, let's, don't raise your hand, but let's just slowly. Cancer. I'm going to say pancreatic cancer, one of the worst forms of cancer. Someone else? Substance abuse, that, that very good. I, I don't think the average person would, would think through that, but definitely. Um, for many, apart from a huge breakthrough, it can destroy a life just like any other disease. Someone else? COVID. 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 
Um, pray for Jean and June Black. They don't have COVID, but they were exposed to COVID last weekend. A family member exposed them to COVID. They were visiting. Jean is on oxygen, so, so that condition makes him, uh, it would be very serious if he got COVID. Jean and June Black. Someone else. Y'all haven't hit some of the things that I thought you would hit. Diabetes. Diabetes. Multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's, thank you. Who said that? Alzheimer's. See, I'm thinking of those diseases that you lose hope almost immediately. See, lepers had no hope, right? My mom had rheumatoid arthritis. You've heard me say that before, but for over 50 years, they had put prosthetic plastic joints in her fingers and in her toes. The ones in her fingers failed. They broke. She functioned with crippled hands that literally, that looks good compared to her hands. She lived like that. They took the joint. Actually, they didn't put prosthetic joints in her toes. They took the joints out of all of her toes except her big toes. Her fo toes floated. That took the pain away from her. Now, even as bad as that was, and me watching her live her life, it was not a terminal disease. What about ALS? Terrible disease. Parkinson's, even over time, becomes a terrible disease. My sister has MS. Autoimmune disease really runs in our family, all different types of varieties. And, but thank goodness she has been, she's had multiple flare-ups, blindness in one eye, numbness in her leg, but she's on medication and she lives a normal life. But you now just use your mind you place yourself in one of those diseases that really you lose hope. Pray for my mother-in-law. Uh, I failed to mention her. She's in worse shape than Jean in June. She's just come out of chemo from breast cancer. She's 78, and she was diagnosed with COVID last week. She says that her COVID experience is worse than her chemo experience. So that just says something about her health right now. So pray for LaVon, um, Jennifer's mom. So you think about a condition that would cause you to be incredibly thankful if you were healed. I don't know if you believe in healing. I believe in healing still. Doctors, many of them believe in healing because they witness things that they can't explain medically. It's a beautiful thing. I believe God heals medically. Um, he heals miraculously. And this is hard for people, but I believe he heals by taking us home to our home in heaven. Forever healing. But I'm thinking about healing on this earth. You're proclaimed healed. I figure if Jesus were present after you were healed, you might fall at his feet and thank him. Why would you fall at his feet and thank him? Because you knew the source of your healing was a miracle that came from his very hands and from his lips. Be healed. And the Samaritan came back to Jesus, fell on his feet, uh, at his feet, and thanked him. Eucharisteo. You hear the word for Eucharist in there. It's the word give thanks. It occurs over and over and over again in the New Testament, often at the lips of Jesus, on the lips of Jesus. In Eucharisteo is the word grace. 
So we identify the graces of God in our life. We give thanks. And here's the key. I guarantee there was no more joyful person in the crowd. The healed leper was experiencing joy because he had been graced by God and he had voiced thanks. And Voskamp, and Voskamp, says these words, gratitude is the preeminent attitude of the Christ follower. Gratitude is the preeminent attitude of the Christ follower. When Jesus says um, in the end of that passage, Luke chapter 11, excuse me, my body, the, it's so hot in here that air conditioning's blowing the pages on my Bible. <laughs> just joking, just joking. <laughs> We're making effort to get this problem fixed. It has become a problem. So at the end, last verse 19, and he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you I thought he was already well. I thought he was already healed. He was, but he was healed physically. This word sozo for healing is much more than physical healing. I'd like to read some other translations. ESV, Jesus said, your faith has made you well. NLT, Jesus said to him, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. King James Version, and he said unto him, arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Luke um, 17, 19 in the message translation. Then he said to him, get up on your way. Your faith has healed. And and this is the normal meaning, meaning of sozo saved you. It saved you. Giving thanks always accompanies salvation. If you're a follower of Jesus, I challenge you to go back in time to that point in life or that season in life where your eyes were open to the good news of Jesus Christ. I can go back there. I was 14 years old, but I can go back there. A lot of water has gone under the bridge, as they say. But I was not raised in church. I had never heard the good news of Jesus Christ up until the time I was 14 years old. I was given a Bible like about a year before I was 14 years old. Other than the Bible that was given to me when I was born that I never looked at, I was given a living Bible. Y'all remember those big old green living Bibles? Some of y'all do. But you see, I'd attended church for a couple months, and my eyes were open to the most incredible news I'd ever heard in my life. One that I'd blown it. I already knew I'd blown it, even at 14 that I'd chosen my way over God's way. There's another word for that. I'd sinned. I'd missed the mark, literally a definition of sin. You know, you play darts on a dart board. You might hit the bullseye, but God says you never hit the bullseye. In fact, there's holes all in your sheetrock because you missed the mark. You've sinned. That's not the good news. The good news is that Jesus died in my place. The wages of sin is death. He paid the price that I should have paid, and he died in my place on the cross. Did I give thanks after I heard and understood the good news of Jesus Christ? You better believe it. Did I give thanks after I entered a relationship with Jesus Christ? I'm going to challenge you. I gave thanks before I entered a relationship with Jesus Christ. When I heard the good news, you got to be kidding me. 
Thank you, Jesus. In fact, I've led hundreds of people in simple prayers to embrace Jesus. And I believe that in the vast majority of those prayers, something's been said like, thank you, Jesus, for giving your life for me that I might have life. Thank you for loving me right where I am. You can never do anything to cause God to love you anymore, and you will never do anything to cause God to love you less. You say, what? Oh, that's true. That's called good news. It doesn't matter what you've done. You can't earn God's love. It doesn't matter what you've done. God does not love you less because there's no sin greater than the blood of Jesus. There's no sin greater than the cross. And when we come to God with our sins and place them in his hands, he chooses us and adopts us as his children. Giving thanks always accompanies salvation. If you're not thankful for what Jesus has done for you, I would challenge you as to whether you have a relationship with Jesus. Is that fair? Say, Dale, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't have to know what you're going through. God still loves you. And you can know that you're loved even in the worst storm of life. Third principle. I might say this one a couple times. Same principle. Giving thanks flows from confidence in God. We've said it, but I want to link it. Giving thanks always accompanies salvation. Giving thanks flows from confidence in God. Giving thanks always accompanies salvation. Salvation. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. So Daniel has had a close relationship um, with Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's son. Um, There's a writing on the wall. Daniel interprets it. And that very night, the new ruler... Nebuchadnezzar's son dies. Darius, a Mede, becomes king. And Daniel, as he often did, rises to authority in this empire. He was one of three of the most powerful men. And he is what we would, he was a refugee, a forced refugee. He was a Jewish man. But he was such a man of integrity and so trustworthy and such a leader that he was raised to a position of authority. There were other leaders in the kingdom that were jealous of Daniel and they had it out for him and they were going to set a trap for him. They couldn't figure out how to catch him though. But the more they thought, they said, there's one way we can get Daniel in big trouble. And so they proposed that there was a, would be an edict that anyone who really, I'm going to say prayed to, worshipped, honored another god or another person, they would be thrown into the lion's den. Now, Daniel knew the edict, but Daniel didn't change his way of life. Verse 10. When Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open towards Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and what? Gave thanks. Now, there's an edict sign that's going to result in him giving getting thrown in the lion's den, most likely. He didn't shut his windows. He prayed just like he had always prayed. He prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. 
His opponents who set the trap let King Darius know what he had done. King Darius was very sad because he loved Daniel and realized what had happened. You say, couldn't the king just change the law? No, there was clear rules in that civilization, in that culture, that the law would stand. And so Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. St. John of Avila said these words, one act of thanksgiving when things go wrong with us, one act of thanksgiving when things go wrong with us is worth a thousand thanks when things are agreeable to our inclinations. Guys, are things going wrong right now in your life? Maybe you think things are going wrong in our world today. I would challenge you. I would question you. Are you giving thanks regardless? Daniel did. Jesus did. Others did in Scripture. Can we? I believe we can. Confidence goes hand in hand with giving thanks. Giving thanks goes hand in hand with salvation. And let's look at Daniel's salvation. Daniel 6, 23. Then the king was exceedingly glad. Why was he glad? Because Daniel was not destroyed by the lines. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no kind of harm was found on him because he had trusted in his God. Turn with me to 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 6. 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 6. By the way, this passage was written during a time when there was and there would be ruthless dictators leading in Rome. At one time in the history um, post-Jesus history of Rome, Christians were impaled on stakes. A stake was put through them, not hung on a cross, impaled on a stake, Pitch, tar was put on them, and they were set aflame to light Rome. Paul writes, First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that they may, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet, godly and dignified in every way. This is good. And it is pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom. We know what a ransom is, right? Someone's been kidnapped. Someone's a hostage. We pay a ransom for their freedom. Jesus was the ransom for our freedom. Who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. How are we supposed to pray for our leaders? I'm going to get it wrong, but I'm going to go through the list of presidents since I um, have been able to vote. Actually, the president, before I started voting, on through today. Help me. Don't be too mean to me. Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George Herbert Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, right? Barack Hussein Obama. And if I haven't said president in front of every name, I'm trying to move fast, right? Right? Right. Donald Trump. 
And now apparently Joe Biden, President-elect Joe Biden. You see, it doesn't matter who is in a position of authority. I am supposed to offer up supplications. God supply their need as a leader. Prayers, intercessions, When they're in a problem, I pray that they might have the wisdom and strength to lead us out of a problem. And guys, then the tough one. And thanksgivings for all people. I shared this passage with a person of a different political persuasion, one of my best friends this week. And he said, Dale, you're stretching me. You're challenging me because I got to say giving thanks is not something I've been doing. I'm not sure giving thanks is something I'll be able to do. I'm trying to cover both ends so you can just quit guessing about me, right? What's the word? Eucharisteo. giving thanks. We give thanks because we see a situation around us, in this case, leaders, as grace. Why? Because God is sovereign and no one rises to a position of authority without God being involved. No one. Good, bad, doesn't matter. And then joy follows. We identify grace, we give thanks, and we experience joy. Now, I'm going to tell you straight up. And again, you know, I'll quit saying it, so I'm just going to teach now. You can be angry, frustrated, and depressed for the next four years, regardless of the outcome, or you can experience joy. The choice is yours. I never said giving thanks was easy. Prayer's not easy. We develop the discipline of praying. We talk to our Abba Father just as our master modeled for us. Jesus prayed. And we give thanks. We give thanks. I've had many friends over the years battle cancer. And I've seen many friends over the years give thanks to God in the midst of the worst time in their life. You know why? Because God's still good. He never changes. We might have doubts, but he is always Good. Mike, if you would, hand me a communion cup. And I'd like to read one more passage. The Apostle Paul, describing what happened at the Last Supper, says, For I, 1 Corinthians 11, Verse 23, for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he saw what was before him as grace. Was it grace? Yes, it was. It was grace for you and me. Jesus endured the cross for the joy set before him. He was joyful even in suffering to know that you and I would become the children of God. Eucharisteo. Grace, giving thanks, joy. As we open our communion cup, I'd like to ask you a question. 
Has there been a time and point in your life when you placed your confidence in Jesus? In Jesus. Maybe you were self-sufficient most of your life and you've come to a point where you're no longer self-sufficient. You said, Dale, I've been one of the most confident people throughout my whole life, but I'm not that person anymore. Could it be that you're not that person anymore because God's prepared you for this very moment to place your confidence in Jesus. Jesus wants you to come with empty hands. Remember? And say, Father, I thank you for sending Jesus. I thank you for loving me when I didn't deserve it. I thank you for paying a ransom that I might be saved, healed, free. And I embrace Jesus as my Savior today. Say, Dale, you don't know what I've done. I don't need to know. God loves you. And there's nothing you'll ever do to cause God not to love you, to love you any more or any less. God is love. I hope you'll call that grace today and embrace that grace and when your eyes are open to that gospel, I guarantee you can't help but give thanks. Father, we thank you for the body of Christ that was broken for us. We thank you for the blood of Christ that was shed for us. We thank you that he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus said, this cup represents um, the new covenant sealed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's stand right now and worship our king. If you'd like to pray with me, one of our elders, one of our staff, we are always available. Listen to this beautiful song and let's sing this beautiful song. God's sovereign. He's in control. He is good. Work it. 
Amen. Um, we have a special announcement today. As you know, um, you guys nominate elders early in the fall, and um, we want to present uh, a candidate, and Wayne's going to say more about that right now. Wayne, if you would come forward. Good morning, Cypher. My name is Wayne Plunkett. I'm the newest elder here at uh, Cypher Christian Church, and I've been tasked with the responsibility of uh, communicating to you the next nominee for uh, the elder board. Um, but this message of Thanksgiving, <laughs> I believe, is a great segue for us to just thank God and glorify him for the gifts and the talents and the treasures that we have been uniquely blessed with here at Typhoon Christian Church. So uh, for all of those who volunteer, thank you for your, uh, on behalf of the elder board, thank you for your, your time and the service uh, here at Typhoon Christian Church. And for those who are not yet volunteering, just think about how you can get plugged in plugged in. But I digress. Um, so about a month or so ago, we met with an individual whom you have chosen uh, to become uh, the next uh, potential elder at Cypher Christian Church. During that meeting, we were extremely blessed um, in hearing this, this individual's story, the genesis of his faith, how he came to, to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and the journey that ensued. And uh, I am happy to announce to you that Elder Board has uh, recommended Jeff Ball. <laughs> Jeff uh, and his wife, Debbie, and family, they've been here for quite some time. If I'm not mistaken, 20, 20 years or so. That's, that's a really long time. We're extremely excited about the gifts and the talents. Obviously, you can see he's Cypher Christian Center uh, Chopin, so. Uh, <laughs> but we're extremely excited about the gifts and the talents and the diversity in, in the ideology that he will bring to the elder board. And uh, we have two ask. First ask is that uh, within the next two weeks, if you have questions or concerns about Jeff's uh, nomination, the process, and about Jeff himself, please send your questions to Cypher Elders at Cypher.org. Uh, That's elders at Cypher.org. Cypher Christian. Christ Cypher and the last ask is that you pray for Jeff and his family as we go through this process. And with that, if you don't mind, bow your heads while we, we close out in prayer. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this wonderful message. Um, we ask, Lord, that you forgive us for the times where we've forgotten the many blessings that you've given us. Father, may we put aside whatever differences we may have, uh, whether political uh, or, or whatever it is that's going on in our lives, and look to the things, dear Father, that you've richly blessed us with. Father, help us to uh, appreciate the people you've put in our lives and seize the opportunity to say thank you. Uh, Father, I pray today for this church. I pray that as we go out this week that uh, we will be richly blessed and we'll have a new perspective and we'll seek opportunity to say thank you, not only to you, my Lord, but also to say thank, thank you to the people around us. And with that, Cypher, I, and, that, and with that, uh, I declare the blessings of the Lord upon our congregation. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you and turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Amen. Guys, we have journals, more journals available. I want to say again, because, you know, sometimes we make things super, super spiritual. Yes, you can list God's love and all these things in your journal. But, you know, one at a time, not paragraphs, but again, very simple listings of everyday things we take for granted. We're doing this over the entire month of November. And I'm telling you, whether you believe it or not, you are blessed. Give thanks to the Father for all the many ways he's blessed us. Don't put a sloppy brush over it as Ann Voskamp does and say just, Father, thank you for today. No, let him know throughout the day. Take that journal with you and write down things you are thankful for. Wayne, thank you for the announcement. And um, God bless you guys.